Welcome to this Spectator podcast with me, Fraser Nelson. In his cover piece this week, Peter Oborn says that David Cameron and George Osborne are using the sort of techniques of deception deployed by New Labour in the run-up to the Iraq War. But Matthew Paris, in his column, says that in politics there's no point complaining about being lied to. That's the cry of the bad loser. They both join me now. Peter, you wrote a book on the rise of political lying. At the time, you said it was labour malaise. Do you really think the Tories are now just as bad? Very much so. There was something very new about the um, what I really call the new labour epistemology, which took away truth from its normal meaning and turned it into an instrument of power. And I, when, when Danny, David Cameron turned up as, as leader of the Conservative Party, I, I think it's fair to say that he offered a new a return to a more traditional um, political discourse. Uh, but what has happened in the last, um, really quite recently, the last couple of years, last year really, is that mendacity and fabrication and deception have re-entered political discourse from the very top. That's very troubling, and it's now part of the campaign to keep Britain in the European Union. Matthew, do you see any comparison between the tricks Tony Blair was up to and what David Cameron is doing now for the referendum? Yes, I do. I I think um, there are many parallels between the way uh, Blair sold the Iraq war and the way that Cameron and co are selling staying in the European Union. Um, That, I'm afraid, is how modern politicians do sell things. Uh, Tony Blair genuinely believed that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and was a threat to world peace, but what he didn't know was what he pretended to know, the various facts, and and, uh, dressed allegations up as facts. David Cameron genuinely and George Cameron genuinely believe that if we leave the European Union, we will take a, a terrific economic hit and we'll all be the poorer for it. What they, what they don't know is they pretend forecasts that, uh, and, the, and, and the entirely uh, dreamed up numbers that, that politicians tend to attach to what are basically their hunches. Peter? I think that you are wrong in saying, Matthew, that All politicians do this. I can name you loads and loads of politicians who wouldn't have done it. The idea that all politicians are liars and therefore we just got to accept that and that's how politics is, is, and I think you you would agree with me, is a false uh, interpretation of how politics is. Yes, I, I, they're certainly better and worse. But Matthew, there is such a thing as basic standards of honesty and accuracy. I mean, as a journalist, you're subject to it. But that's what politicians do. They, they puff things. And were, were we to subject politics to the, the, the kind of legal constraints that Peter is suggesting, it wouldn't just be the Remain side. I completely agree with Matthew, by the way, that the no side is wrong uh, and culpable in misrepresenting how much money we... We, we give in to the European Union. But there is a difference, and this is the use of the apparatus of the British state by the um, pro-EU side. And what does distress me, that just as in uh, 2002, the Secret Intelligence Service became the Blairite battering ram to war, now the Treasury is becoming the propaganda wing of the pro-Europeans. Peter Reborn and Matthew Paris, thanks very much.